In this video, I'll start out modeling in Autodesk Maya the pieces I need for my mitosis animation. The elements I need to make are the round cell and the DNA within it. I need to make some DNA that will replicate, and then I need to make a cell that is started on mitosis, that is starting to divide. And finally, two diploid cells. I'll do this with a couple of simple models starting out as spheres and get some blend shapes ready so I can show that animation. Here in Maya, the first thing I want to do is to set my project. It's important to set the project and then begin on a scene or open a scene so that Maya knows where to put everything. I'll choose File and Set Project. We'll set our project to the Cell Mitosis folder. And in there are subdirectories, assets, autosave, images, and source images, and so on. These are where Maya keeps different things we use. Maya scenes, our native working file, go in the scenes folder. Sound files go in sound. Images is where Maya renders images too. Textures come from source images. These are images that are part of a material. I'll go into the root folder and click set. Now when I save a scene, it'll go into that scenes folder, for example. I'll start out then by building my basic cell. I'll use my hotbox, pressing and holding the spacebar, and clicking on the Maya button. This shows up wherever you have the mouse, and is modeless. It is transparent over any other windows you have open. I'll click on Maya and choose Front View, and then hold Shift and Right Click to pull up the marking menu for Creating Polygon Objects. I'll choose Polysphere, and click and drag a sphere in the view. I'll click on the Polysphere 1 tab. This is the tab that controls the attributes of that sphere. P-Sphere 1 controls the transform, where it is. P-Sphere Shape 1, the shape node, controls how it's drawn and how it renders. Polysphere 1, then, is the attributes on the sphere. How many divisions does it have in the radius? Let's set the radius here to 10. And I'll put the subdivision's height at 21. This way, I actually get a flat spot on the equator. I'll press my, and hold my spacebar for the hot box and choose Maya and Top View again. I'll zoom out and turn off my grid so it's a little bit easier to see. There's my cell, and right across the middle, I have a flat area. I'll put in some extra divisions so I can stretch this cell when I need. I'll hold Shift and right click. This is a marking menu for polygon modeling. Maya is context sensitive and knows what we're doing. I'll choose my Insert Edge Loop tool. And this lets me land an edge loop where I need. I'll put one right here in the middle. Notice that it snaps right in the middle, and here's why. When I hold Shift and right click again, and choose Insert Edge Loop Tool, or the dialog next to it, we can see that it's set to multiple edge loops at one. I can also choose Relative Distance and click and land an edge loop where I'd like, or I can have more edge loops created each time. For example, a relative distance lets me land an edge loop where I want. I'll put one here and one on the other side. And this gives me the option later to be able to stretch this and make that shape during mitosis. I'll close the tool settings. And now I need to make the DNA. I'll hold Alt and click the mouse wheel in to pan over. Press W for Move, which gets me out of inserting an edge loop. And then click to deselect. If it's still selected in light blue, that means I'm still in edge mode, and I can see by the pre-selection highlight. I'll press F8 to go back to object mode, or right-click and choose object mode from the marking menu. Now I'll hold shift and right-click and make a poly cube. I'll drag a small cube and hold shift while I'm dragging to make a perfect cube. We'll make this one maybe one on a side. It doesn't have to be terribly big. I'll zoom in and press F to focus. Then I'll press spacebar for the hotbox, click on Maya, and choose Perspective, and focus in again. The number 5 displays in shaded view, 4 for wireframe, and 6 for textures if we have any. I'll press F11 for face, pick one of the faces, and hold shift and right click and choose extrude face. I'll drag this out, and pull it over a little bit, making that bent shape here. Then I'll hit G to repeat last and do it again, pulling out, over, and clicking on this light blue ring to rotate as part of the extrusion. Now I'll spin around to the other side and press G to repeat last and extrude the front out and pull it over and make that crook shape. I'll rotate and do one more extrusion here. 
This will work well for my DNA strand. I'd like to do one more extrusion, very small, at the start and end of this shape here. And the reason is I'm going to round it over using smoothing, and this will help hold the ends round. That's the start of my DNA, and I'll press F8 to go back to object. Now I'll press F3 for polygons and choose Mesh and Smooth. This will subdivide the mesh and initially give me four polygons for every one that's selected. And there's my round DNA shape to begin. I can take this and make it a little wavy if I need. Pressing F9 for vertex, for example, and selecting vertices, W for move, and pulling them a little bit, adding a little bit of character into my DNA. That's one strand, and I can duplicate it by pressing Control D, W for move and pulling it over, E for rotate, and I'll spin it 180 degrees on the Z axis. I'll press and hold E, and left click and hold anywhere. When you do that, press W, E, R, or Q, and left click and hold, you get a marking menu or tool settings for that tool. I'll turn on discrete rotate, which snaps my rotation every 15 degrees and rotate this in the blue z-axis 180 degrees. I'm looking down in the bottom left on my viewport and it shows me that rotation. Now my DNA is ready and I need to make one more piece for my animation. I'll select my cell and duplicate it by pressing Control D. I'll move this over and go into a top view so I can see it better, pressing F to focus. I'm going to stretch this out and make what's called a blend shape. What a blend shape does is allow us to morph or transition between two shapes. The key with blend shapes is they need to have the same geometry. You start with the base and then just move the faces or vertices to make the new geometry. Without adding more geometry or taking away geometry, you can blend between them. It's a deformation. I'll press F9 for vertex. Grab almost half the sphere here, leaving the middle edge loop alone and I'll move this up. This will make my blend shape and I'll do the same here on the bottom. Grabbing and pulling to stretch out that shape. Now I'll take some of these extra edge loops I added in and space them through here, leaving the middle alone for now, although I have some flexibility. I'll grab these and pull down and one more. If you notice I'm moving on one axis at a time and that way I'm moving in a straight line. Now I'll take these and scale them, selecting and pressing R for scale, and I'll switch over to a perspective view. What I'm going to do here is hold control and scale in the blue Z-axis, which scales the X and Y proportionately, and I'll pull them in to make that middle of the bow tie shape, we'll call it. I'll reselect the other loops, in this case the next two, picking one, holding shift and picking the other, switching back to a perspective so I can see better, and holding control and scaling on Z and I'm going to make that shape of the cell during mitosis. I'll do it one more time, just grabbing the next set here. And it's okay that they're a little bit asymmetric. It'll add a nice character to it. I'll scale in, and there's my cell shape. What I'm going to do then is actually use two more cells on this. There's one that's our initial shape. Two is during mitosis. We will transition or morph between using our blend shapes. The third shapes are going to be clones of the initial one. They'll be the diploid cells. And what we need to show is that this blend shape will turn off or animate its transparency, and so it goes invisible. The other two will animate on at the same time, and we'll have a transition. We can make it work with two cells from one, but it gets difficult. So an easier solution sometimes is to use two separate models and fade between them. In the next video, I'll get materials on and get the blend shapes set up for the animation.